What up dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome to another Warframe video. We're gonna be doing five videos a week from now on, by the way. And would you look at that, something actually happened, or something was talked about happening, here in Warframe, finally we got a dev update post thing on Railjack 3.0. And it's a doozy, it is a doozy, dude, so we're going over the whole thing. Gonna go over, I've read over it, there's also a video that Rebecca made that we can briefly reference while we're going over this. So before we get into it guys, make sure you hit that like button, sub to the channel, and all that kind of stuff. I will see you on Twitch as well later today. Alright, let's get into this dev workshop. It's for Railjack 3.0 and it's a lot of stuff. It is a lot of stuff. It came out three minutes ago. Alright, so we've got the dev workshop video. We're gonna be referencing that a little bit here. Uh, where it's a video that Rebecca made, and it's got lots of, like, little... As you can see, it's a 22-minute video from DE, so that means there's a lot of stuff going on here. We're going to go over both of those things, guys. Okay, so, first off, I want to just preface this video with Guy End Point is being removed. All right, let's go on from there. The next update we deploy on PC will be update 29.1, or 29.10, the Corpus Proxima and the new Railjack. The update touches virtually every part of Railjack, and in our longest dev workshop to date, we will be telling you what's going on and why. Get comfy, dude. All right, Warframe has several key strengths that are helping it be a game, and it's a video game. One of these strengths is the sense of flow, going from gun to blade to jump and all that stuff in between. Uh, and they think that the Railjack doesn't really illustrate that very well. Um, quest lines and other stuff is good. Enter the Railjack technology from the old war where we were wielding it and flying around in a ship could take all the Warframe combat into orbit. We tried many things that were different from the norm. While some of the elements di uh, did offer a unique spin on an existing formula that's not for everybody, and many complaints cited the amount of separation from the main game as a negative. And we agree. To quote the venerable Cephalon Psy, we have to work to do it. We have work to do. All right, so here's what's going to happen when you log into the game whenever this comes out on your respective console of choice. And by the way, this will come out on PC first, and then uh, console will get um, the update 30 with uh, Sevagoth and all that stuff, uh, update 30. We don't know when that will come out, though. So when you when you log in, there are some things that will be changing. You will be basically, you can buy a Railjack for plat from the market. Let's start with that. And there's also going to be a new Railjack modding screen right here, as you can see on the left of her navigation. There is a Railjack modding screen that you can take your own upgrades and if you want to buy a rail if you don't have a railjack anything like that you can buy it for for moolah or traded stuff so 400 plat for that railjack right there skip all that stuff skip all that waiting time they're reducing the uh resource cost and waiting time for building the railjack as well guys so keep that in mind additionally when you log in your avionics so those mods for railjack ships will become mods also Dirac, that stuff you use to upgrade the Railjack mods or avionics or whatever, that stuff's being turned into Endo. So if you have 100,000 Dirac, that becomes 100,000 Endo. And also, you had to upgrade the uh, the grid on your Railjack, that stuff's getting rec uh, refunded as well. I think it's like 39,000 Endo you're going to be getting from that. Now there's also this thing called the Plexus. It was called the Harness on the dev stream. It's actually going to be like a little modding screen that you can bring your different Railjack mods with you. And as you can see right here, there's Railjack Auras now. That's kind of cool. So um, this is this is how it's going to be changing, guys. Now we have uh, eight mod slots here, and they did add a Railjack Aura slot over here. So we will not be technically losing too much stuff on our current builds. Um, so there's the, the basically the uh, integrated stuff. So it's going to be like increased health, increased um, movement speed, and stuff like that. There's the battle abilities next to it. Which will, I, and also look, look at, notice, there is Forma on here. So there potentially will be Forma for Railjack, guys. And I, actually, I'd say I just count on it, honestly. So you might need to Forma your Railjack uh, grid or whatever. There's the battle stuff right here. And as you can notice right here, th these are rank 10 mods. So good thing you're going to have all that Dirac and stuff, because um, or all that Endo, because these are going to be a lot of points to rank up all the way. Uh, as you can see right there, Tether is only going up to rank 5. Tether might not, they might end up nerfing Tether, but Void Holes are rank 10, Particle Rams are rank 10, some of these other ones are going to be different ranks as well. And then the final one is the Tactical, so things like Void Cloak, Intruder Stasis, etc, etc, Death Blossom, basically just Void Cloak as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, those things are changing. Also, when you log in on the day this comes out, you will be getting all of your Intrinsics refunded because they're going to be reworking what Intrinsics do. And we'll be going over all that stuff uh, later in the little post thing they got going on here. 
Um, the new command intrinsics, you'll have crew members for your ship. Let's see if we can find that in here. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. We'll talk about that a little bit more here. You can buy your crew members from Ticker. And depending on how much the syndicates dislike you or like you, it will change the price. As you can see right here, um, this guy costs 180,000 credits. The one that she's looking at right now, it, it would be 100,000 credits if New Loka uh, didn't like her, or whoever this syndicate is. But that syndicate does like her, so she gets half the price. So, And you can apparently upgrade these guys too. So keep a lookout. That will be at Ticker on Fortuna to upgrade your and buy your uh, crew members. And guys, there will also be <laughs> there will be crew member slots. So keep that in mind. It costs her 20 plat to buy a crew member slot right here. So, you know, I mean, it's not like we need stuff to spend plat anyway. So um, wreckage cost, everything's basically every price of resources being reduced. So keep that in mind. People that were early adopters will also get a Railjack statue. Um, let's see if we can find that. It's very not important. But if you have a dry dock in your ship, you'll get this just to say like, yep, you did waste your time years ago. All right, continuing on with the stuff that will be happening right when you log in, um, there will be new uh, matchmaking options as well, which will make things a little bit more streamlined. So that's good. All right, and there's also going to be a new Railjack component as well. It's called the Hull. It's a new part right here. As you can see, Sigma Hull. That will be increasing your tank stats and things of that nature. So there will be lots of stuff to farm if you are going to be wanting to play Railjack uh, whenever this comes out, which will be apparently coming out in the next two weeks. All right, moving on. What's different in missions? New Railjack layout. Um, basically, it's smaller interior. The, sh the turrets have been moved. Um, the uh, I, there's you also there will be no more stamina bar for the jets on the Railjack. As you see right here, here's the middle part of the ship. The turrets are gone there. I'm not sure where they're going now, but they are being moved. Um, and yeah, you can fire. The, you can basically, there's no more stamina bar for, for flying around, so you can just have a lot more mobility. So things like flow burn or whatever that really good speed increasing one, that will be a lot more valuable, guys. So keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, that's a good change there, honestly. Uh, they're going to be buffing the hazards a lot. And there will be also individual resource pools. The damage types will be changing as well. We'll go over that in a little bit here. And what will keep you playing? Corpus Railjack, Command Intrinsic, and New Missions. They are they are delaying Void Storms and opening Relics in Railjack to the Update 30, which will probably be coming out over a month from now. All right, so they want to just make this easier to get to, more accessible. You can buy your Railjack for money. Uh, the Plexus is the thing I was telling you about where you can basically mod out your own uh, loadout and bring it with you into the mission. You're not going to be forced to like run only Void Hole because the guy whose ship you're on only has Void Hole. You can use any abilities that you have equipped yourself when you're using the ship. Um, also, something to keep in mind, Flux Energy is being removed. So instead of using Flux Energy, it will be using Warframe's Energy Pool. So basically... Always run Prime Flow if you are running a Railjack mission, guys. That is an interesting change. I don't really like that change at all, but that is what they're doing. No more Flux Energy from Reactors. So good thing I grinded out that high Flux Energy Reactor. Um, all right, so reverting things to familiar modding screen will help people. They just want to make it easier to get into, basically, which is good because they were they put so much work into it, and it's just, like, so obscure and out of place. So that's what they need to do. Um, so let's go over these new intrinsics here. Like, dang, there's a lot of stuff here, okay? And keep in mind, they are refunding everything. So, um, yeah, there is some new stuff here, and you'll be able to pick whatever you want to go for. All right, so let's start with tactical. We're going to go from 1 to 10, okay? We're going to start with the tactical tree. Um, level 1 will get you the mods, tactical mods and crew tracking, so that you will not be able to use Void Cloak, apparently, unless you have level 1 tactical. Level 2 of tactical, Warframe Ability Access in the Tactical Menu, and the crew chase camera. That lets you cast war from abilities by looking at your mini map and clicking on them. I really never do that, but apparently it is pretty useful. Level 3 tactical, fast travel within the railjack and send commands via tactical menu. You need to now have rank 3 with the railjack uh, tactical to get that. Level 4 omni gear can be used to warp to the... Also, oh, basically you want to make sure you get level 4 at least, because that omni teleport back to the ship thing is very, very good. Level 5, Necromechs become deployable in all railjack missions. I will be looking to see if you can use those on Hydron yet. But it says in all Railjack missions right here for Necromax being deployable. Level 6 of the tactical tactical mod energy cost reduced by uh, 25%. Level 7, tactical mod cooldown reduced by 20%. Level 8, arc wing blink cooldown minus 25%. Necromax summon cooldown minus 25%. Level 9, tactical ability cooldown reduced further 20%. And then level 10, warp to any crew member on the tactical screen. So I'd say if... If you don't really care about getting some of this stuff at the top here, just get to level 4. 
And if you want to deploy your Necromech, get the level 5. On piloting, level 1 will get you the engine boost maneuver, which is boosting the engines. Yay. Lateral dodges maneuver at level 2. Level 3 is 25% less damage while boosting. Level 4 is drifting with the uh, Railjack. Level 5 is vacuum radius increased while boosting or dodging. Very good there. Um, loot dungeon radar. Mark hidden loot dungeons while piloting. Okay. Uh, level 6 is the Evasive Pilot. Energy Ram Sleds now have 25% chance to miss and malfunction, causing them to explode. Really, really random, but that's kind of interesting at least. Uh, level 7 is Necromech Speed Increased by 10%. Level 8 is Arc Wing Speed Increased by 20%. And level 9 is a Railjack Takes 25% Less Damage While Boosting and Collisions Do 2,000 Extra Damage. So ramming speed, basically. Level 10 is Railjack Blink. You can blink with the Railjack. When you emerge from the jump, the Railjack will emit a large... Uh, radial slow that will slow enemies in an area. That's pretty awesome. Level 10 piloting sounds pretty cool. That was not there before being able to blink with the railjack. Sounds very disorienting for the people on the railjack, but then again, it sounds too cool to give up. Let's go to gunning now. One of, I'd consider gunning one of the least useful ones before, but let's see what they got now. Level 1 will get you lead indicators for ordnance lock-on. Uh, level 2 is 360 turret view for gunners. Keep my, a lot of this stuff was in the previous uh, intrinsics thing, and they're just like reintroducing it again. Um, Arcwing Slingshot enabled. You need to have a gunner thing for level 3 now. Um, Arcwing Slingshot now pierces hulls. So you need to have level 3 gunner to pierce the hull with the Railjack, uh, or the Arcwing Slingshot. Uh, level 4, Arc Melee weapons gain increased range and damage. Wow. They are still going to suck, <laughs> to be honest. Um, level 5, Necromech gun damage increased. Okay. Still not seeing Necromechs and Hydron anywhere in here. Level 6, Railjack gun heat minus 20%. Level... Seven, slingshot range plus 50%, and you can uh, use the guns for longer. Arc wing damage at level eight, uh, strength, energy, that was there before. Level nine is under review, S may st stay the same, okay. <laughs> and then level 10 is the current one with the lock on auto thing. So nothing really going on in level in uh, gunning besides the arc wing slingshot and some gunning stuff. The last tree here, we got engineering. And oh, wait, where's the command? The command insurance is not on here, I just noticed. Um, level one is faster repair. With Omni Tool, level 2 is 50% reduction in air support cooldown. The landing craft air support in regular missions. Okay, that's really, really, really terrible useless. Thank you for that. At least it's level 2. Ability to craft ordnance at the forge. Level 4 is ability to craft dome charges. Okay, you can't do that unless you're level 4, apparently. Um, level 5 is ability to craft heals for the railjack. And increases the field forge yield by 25%. Level 6 is forge cooldowns minus 25%. Uh, level 7 is increased forge output by another 25%. Level 8 is arc wing shield armor and health increased by 30%. Level 9 is necromech bust 25% health and shield. And level 10 is repair ship damage remotely from the tactical screen. I do not see anything about necromechs being used in normal missions. They just It just says in all railjack missions right here, guys. So I, I why do I call these terrible things? It's like I just know or something like that. All right, moving on a little bit more with these crew members right here. They will be able to use your primary weapons as long as you buy them. Or I'm just kidding. You, as long as you have enough slots to equip them. As you can see right here, the endurance stat is going to increase the shields and health of your railjack. And they're going to have other things like repair stats and things of that nature. Um, so keep that in mind. So relatively okay stuff there. And of course, you will be able to upgrade that with a certain amount of points. Um, I guess depending on your command rank or something like that. Level up their skills and assign them to specific roles before taking off and change the assignments on the fly with the tactical menu. Crews will gain, gain affinity like you used to. So you can level up your crew members. That's awesome. Uh, and keep in mind, you will not be able to have these crew members when you are in a full squad of other players. This will make soloing a lot more manageable, though, for people. And the last stop before you go to the dry dock. If you have access to a clan dry dock, fear not. Publicly available dry docks can be found in the second and third tier relays on each platform. So Saturn, Cronia, and Pluto relays will have dry docks in them in the future. As I said, the hull is going to increase the stats of your ship right here. It's another part for your ship. All right, wreckage cost changes. Um, oh, by the way, if you had a bunch of, um, if you built a bunch of wreckage before this update, you will be getting some stuff to um, basically, <laughs> so a little sweeten the deal of them having to change things all the time. So if you get level three, you get... Uh, some rush repair drones, a legendary core, an umbra forma, and some resource bundles. And you also get some, like, endo, some riven slivers, thank you, uh, and some resource and affinity boosters, as well as getting a free void hole and some other stuff. 
All right. So, moving on, matchmaking. I don't really care about matchmaking too much, so let's move on past that. This is already going to be a very, very long video. When you first step onto the railjack, you may notice a few key differences. The left and right turret behind the cockpit are no more. Instead, you'll find entrances to a dorsal turret on the top of the ship. So, there's going to be a floor for the turrets on the top of the ship. I guarantee that will be buggy. But let's, let's see how that looks, okay? Going further into your railjack, there used to be a large open area with several floors connecting all the railjack stuff and the cargo on the top. The area is essentially no more. Oh, I like that area. Oh, well. All the ship's vital functions can be compressed into a single smaller space to reduce traversal between stations. Wow, they really changed this a lot, didn't they? <laughs> uh, back in the cockpit, they chose <laughs> we chose a mission node to launch from the dry dock. And upon warping into the sector, your railjack feels lighter and more mobile than ever. And base railjack speed increase and no more railjack sprint bar. They the, This is the size of the ship now. It's it's smaller for sure. Um, so there you go. And like I said, flux energy has been removed. It says flux energy right there, but that's actually your energy pool. All right, so here's what they're going to be doing with the, the hazards, guys. So this is actually going to be a big deal. Um, well, let's, let's read a couple of these things first now. Um, okay. On one other important change to know about the energy economy... Uh, like I said, Battle Avionics will use your Warframe Energy and the Flux Energy. This allows players to, uh, keep, with existing tools of energy regeneration, to keep better integrated uh, regular Railjet gameplay. So energy from the Zeneric Regen, Arc Energize, that will keep your Flux Energy, guys. You can regen Flux Energy, basically, with your energy uh, regenerating stuff. Um, so the new rule of reactors is to provide... So reactors will now provide power strength, range, duration... And wow, okay, that's a big deal. That's actually a really big deal. You'll get power, strength, range, and duration uh, from reactors now. Big, big change there. All right, railjack malfunctions and hazards are now getting buffed. Electrical hazards now scramble your minimap and disable use of tactical menu. That sounds very annoying. The catastrophic hull breaches now deal damage to all players until it is sealed. And it will probably still blow up your ship if you don't fix it fast enough. Ice hazards can now... Freeze interactive elements on the railjack. Pilot seat, forges, arcwing, slingshot, and turrets. That sounds infuriating. You can't pilot the ship if you have an ice hazard. So fix those right away. Fire hazards now cause weapons to overheat quicker and cool down more slowly. Hull ruptures have been removed altogether. So the, the smaller hull ruptures are gone. Unified damage types. The uh, damage types have been just basically changed back to their normal versions. That kind of sucks. But hey, at least uh, hopefully we can still use like corrosive and viral and stuff in space. So ballistic went back to impact. Plasma went back to puncture and stuff like that. Because it was just, it was too confusing. It was honestly just too confusing. Um, so, you know, we might be able to use like corrosive heat or viral heat in space now. No changes. Um, so basically they, they knew that it was just one mission type with this little mini objectives all the time. So they're changing the names of a bunch of these missions to make it seem like it's better than it is. Um, all right, we'll keep you playing. Corpus Railjack, these robots and crewmen talk, taking to the skies will greatly expand the Proxima star chart. Three new planets, Venus, Neptune, and Pluto, will introduce new enemies, new points of interest, and more. There will also be uh, some of the most difficult missions of the Corpus Railjack added to the Veil Proxima. So the, the Veil Proxima will now have Grenier, uh, and Corpus, as well as like the sentient little mini ship that's going on there. And they, they did say that Guyan Point is being removed. You would not be able to just mindlessly nuke down that mission. Um, all right, we will diversify the types of missions available. Uh, there will be a de classic defense and exterminate node uh, available as the main objectives. So there will be a defense railjack mission, guys. Um, have fun with that. It will probably drop some of these aura mods, honestly. <laughs> uh, adding a few new mission types. There's Orifex being added as Orifex Venom. Uh, take down the sentient invaders and use the Necromex and all that stuff. These missions are planned to drop arcanes, offering an alternative to Eidolon capturing squads. Finally, a new mission type known as Volatile will return, will offer a means of sabotaging the ship. It basically sounds like a railjack sabotage. Um, and you blow up the ship while fighting off engineers who can stop you. So basically, mobile defense mixed with sabotage. Um, all right, what comes next? Void Storms and Relics coming out in the uh, next update, not this update. And Corpus Liches and Queen Pins are planned in the future, but not here. More like 30.5 territory. So don't quote me on the update number, though. It's quite, it could be, it could shift a bit. So basically, guys, I'd say if you didn't think that I covered enough here, watch DE's video where they, uh, they're on the dev build showing what's going on here. As you can see right here, she has 115,000 endo. That's probably a lot of it because they refunded uh, the Dirac and the stuff like that from the grid and gave them a bunch of that kind of stuff back. So 
as you can see right here, no um, no stamina bar for flying around the ship. It will be a lot faster feeling. It will probably be kind of like nauseating for the people driving the turrets, at least as far as I'm aware. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. But I'd say overall, these are good changes. It was way too inaccessible for like basically everyone, unless you were someone that was there at launch. As you can see right here, they changed the name of this to uh, Exterminate. So I'm guessing this will just be killing fighters here and some cruise ships. That's a really funny face she's making. Um, and, like, there's other missions, too. Like, there will be a defense and things of that nature. Orphix right there. So there's literally level 21 Orphix Venom right there. Get your arcades. Um, so, yeah, you know what? I think that, like, as far as this is concerned, I'm glad they're expanding on it. They really want to make it work, guys, because they put so much work and time and effort into it. Um, I wish we had the command intrinsic, like, descriptions here, but we don't have those yet. Um, I'm looking forward to... You know, having something new to play in the game. And I, I do think that um, I, at least there's going to be new mods to farm for, right? Like, there will be these aura mods for the, the Railjack that they're going to put in here. Uh, there's going to be probably some new abilities and stuff like that you want to get. Um, getting crew members all kitted out and all that is going to be fun. Like, pick your favorite weapons. Like, I'm going to give this guy the Brahma. I'm going to give this guy the Galaxian Vandal. I'm going to give this guy the Dread. Um, that will be fun. But I, I still am not entirely sure of how well this stuff's going to work out. Like, oh, so if my guy is a complete idiot of the guns, like, I don't want him to go in the guns. Can I tell him not to go in the guns? They probably can't do that. Like, they're, they're going to just, like, you know, go in the guns anyway, even if they suck. So we'll have to see how that works out. Uh, more stuff to farm for with this new Railjack part. I like that. Um, it's inevitable that they're going to have to give people the trophy just because, like, they keep changing things here. So that is actually, wait, if that's a Warframe next to it, that's a gigantic trophy. Oh, man. I did not realize how big that was. So look out for that gigantic trophy. Um, and as far as new missions, like, I, whatever, honestly. Uh, I, I guess defense is going to exist. I I have a feeling they're going to nerf Tether, personally. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, and, you know, this this damage type stuff getting uh, dumbed down is probably good. Because it was just, it was unnecessary. Making it plasma puncture incendiary heat all that stuff so like look for viral heat uh viral corrosive or corrosive heat and all that kind of stuff uh builds for your guns in the near future um and like slash pro i don't think we'll need slash procs personally the enemies aren't gonna be high enough level um so yeah, overall good changes keep my uh, wraith corpus liches sevagoth all that stuff that's not coming out in the update that we're talking about right now that will be in a update afterwards so this will this update we're talking about right now will only be on pc and then console will get the big the big chungus update with uh, Wraith, all that stuff, and um, a lot more. So keep an eye on that one in the near future, guys. I hope that you found this video helpful. I will link the video for from DE and the video or and the the uh, link to their dev post in the description down below. Um, you know, I, I think I, I don't feel like too burned by this. I am kind of annoyed they're bringing they're removing guy in point. She actually does say they're removing guy in point in their video. So, um, you know, there will probably be some new mindless node, though. So don't worry. Like, there will be a new mindless node for grinding stuff in Railjack. It will just have to... It might be one of those exterminate missions. It might be, you know... Um, there will be a new node. Like, don't... Trust me. Like, just because Gaian Point specifically is getting removed, it's not the end of the world. Uh, there will be a new one. And this giant... Sh like, this room right here is getting removed, basically. It's just, like, dead space. Um, it only exists for, uh, like, fires to be, like, right over here and really annoying. Um, so the fact that ship's getting smaller will make it so the, uh, the boarding parties will be, like, right up on you when they spawn in. So, you know, maybe, like, laying down some, like, shock motes from Wisp will be even better than they currently are. Um, maybe placing some traps at the Castana or something like that will be more valuable. So, either way, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I will see you later today on Twitch, and I'll see you with, uh, videos coming out every every weekday on this channel. I'm trying to make sure that can work so we don't have long dead periods on the channel like we have in the past. All right, guys. Hopefully you found it fun, and I'll see you next time. Peace.